If you build it, they will come, especially to the south of France. For over 25 years, the Bold of Prado has solidified its place as one of the most iconic skate locations in the world. Now, under the lights, this legendary Bold is gonna host the best park skaters on the planet. This is Bowl Rippers, and you're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. You got a little, you can use much more. Welcome everybody to the Red Bull Signature Series. I am your host, Sal Masichella. Skate bowls like this one here in Southern California were actually a product of a drought in the 1970s. They had to conserve water so the pools were left empty or drained and that left room for ingenuity and opportunity. Creative and hungry skateboarders sought out the pools, cleaned them up and progressed a new form of bird skating. That is, until the homeowners called the cops and the cops chased them away. But the construction of skate parks with bowls soon followed, and one of the most iconic parks was actually built in the south of France, overlooking Prado Beach under the lights for skating at night. Viewed by many as one of the best skate parks on this earth, it has been visited from skaters around the world, featured in countless video parts, as well as featured in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater video game and it continues to host competitions like the one that we have today, Bowl Rippers. With skateboarding premiering at the 2020 Tokyo Summer Games, everyone is out to prove that their talent belongs on that stage. That means a big international field on hand for the men and the women's side. Competing today will be skaters from the host country France, along with Spain, Italy, Japan, Australia, Brazil, and of course, Team USA. Our competitors are ready to shred, so we're gonna check in with Corbin Harris, mate, and Chris Pastras for the call. Thanks very much, Sal. Yeah, we're here at one of the best skateboarding contests in the world. This is a legendary park. I'm so excited for this, Corbin. Yeah, let's go throw it down to the third member of our team, Tina Dixon. Thanks, Corbin. Now, if you win this event, your name actually becomes part of the bull. Take a look behind me you see some of the placards of the names of previous winners. And it starts with 1999, back when American Wade Speyer won. And that was a classic day and people still talk about that. Now fast forward to 2016 and the event officially became Red Bull Bull Rippers. French skateboarder Robin Bullion won that year. And then in 2018, it was all about Pedro Barros. Now after today's competition, a new name will be added to the bowl. And in talking to the skateboarders earlier, there's so much prestige and history here. Winning this would mean more than anything. It definitely would mean more than anything to win this contest, Chris. Yeah, this thing's uh, been here since 1991. And man, it was one of the first of its kind. It combines elements of creative mini ramp, big transition and vert and pool skating. So uh, a lot of prestige and reputation on the line at this competition. Every year as well, Red Bull comes in and gets new factors and brings a new element to it. What are they this year? Uh, well, this year, Corbin, there's some added vert extensions and some big walls. We've got some street obstacles. There we see one of those extensions that we talked about in Luis Francisco flying high off one of them. There's a, an added bank section as well. Nice big boneless into that lip slide from Luis. This kid specifically can get around this course so quickly and uses every single obstacle. Hi, May Matau. Also up onto that, that new extension, getting into the older section of the bowl right there with the boneless in. There are so many different factors. They call that hip right there the most famous hip in skateboarding. Yeah, that hip made uh, famous in the 90s by names like John Cardiel, Alan Peterson, and Wade Spare. Alex Sagente always won to be in the finals. Unfortunately, not this time as he's trying to lock down this trick. I really want to do it. I don't know why. It was just in the back of my mind. Like, I was just like, damn, I, I would wish to make it. So, uh, yeah, I guess it was like I heard him count it down like 10, 9, 8, 7. Like, yeah, I think I got it in like the last like one or two seconds. So that, that felt pretty good. Chris, a little bit of surprise on him not making the finals. Yeah, I mean, Alex is one of the most decorated names in park terrain skateboarding. He's a X Games gold medalist 2017, 2018. So surprise, we're not going to see Alex moving on. Local hero right now. If anyone can do it in the finals, it's this guy. Look at the way and some of the technical lines that he gets around Marseille. 
Yeah, so much uh, style in his skateboarding. And there we see the young Alessandro Mazzara, a new name, busting onto the scene. He's made a huge name for himself on the global skateboarding scene in Park Terrain this year. We saw him at Dutour, and he's just been on fire ever since. Another one, Denny Leon, 24, just cruising around. These guys, he skated a lot with Vincent Matheron on this course, and you can tell that they skate together all the time. Lo they're basically locals here at Marseille. Nice kickflip stale fish there. And there we see Chris Russell, we call him the muscle, <laughs> coming out of the USA. And uh, that is not a guy you want to run into in a jam session. I was so winded by it, and everybody was ripping so hard. I was like stressing out, kind of like, man, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Uh, that's always your little voice in your head kind of telling you that. But I'm stoked. I guess I ended up on top again, so I'm hyped, you know? Yeah, you said it right there, Chris. It's not a guy that you want to run into. Look at the speed that he carries around this ball. Lip side revert through the corner. Chris is completely fearless. He is an animal. Here are the top six that are going through to the final with Chris the Muscle Russell leading us in number one. We also have a women's competition coming up. Let's go to Tina for more. 2018 was the first year a women's competition was held here in the Bowl de Prado, and Brazil's Indiara Ass made history by becoming the first woman to win that event. She is back and looking stronger than ever, but there is a big international field here, including a couple Japanese skateboarders that have been making some noise earlier this year. But it's a jam format. Aggression, power come into play, and that is Indy's strength. That definitely is indie strength, but there's a lot of riders out here that could take the cake today. Um, people like Poppy Star as well are definitely used to this sort of jam format, aren't they, Chris? Yeah, for sure. And there we see Bryce Wettstein coming out of Encinitas, California. She's got a great surf style, good trick selection, nice flow. So uh, yeah, some fierce competitors. There's Poppy Star, as you mentioned, making Australia proud. I didn't make my whole run, so I was pretty nervous, but I had so much fun in the jam and I got everything I wanted. So all the girls are like hyping each other up and it's just so fun so far, loving it. Last year's winner out of Brazil, Indiara Ass. Skating with the likes of Pedro Barros and people like that, it's gonna make your skateboarding go through the roof. Yeah, that uh, Brazil crew, they travel thick and they hype each other up and Indy's had a huge year with lots of wins under her belt. Kisa Nakamura out of Japan, a lot of different lines and really good mini ramp tricks as well. Yeah, and Kisa uh, is one of the first Japanese women skaters to really make a, a name for herself in 2014. And she broke open the door and now uh, you see tons of amazing women Japanese skaters in the park terrain. Grace Mahofa, only 16 years old, but so many different technical lines within this bowl here at Marseille. And look at the speed that she carries around. Yeah, she's coming out of Florida, got that uh, surfy style, real fluid skateboarding. We're all just giving our all, trying to push each other and keep the stoke up, so it's a lot of fun. Another one with a lot of speed carrying around with a huge front side air there is Autumn. Front side 50-50, trying to get technical as well. Yeah, nice eggplant. Autumn's also from Florida. These are the results for the Red Bull Bowl. Rippers women going into the finals. Poppy Star also with number one, just tipping off Yindiara. Yeah, So a little bit of an upset there. from last year. Yeah, but lots of uh, skateboarding left. We are moving into the finals, so this thing ain't over yet. That's right, Chris, don't go anywhere. This is the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to Red Bull Signature Series from Marseille, France for Bowl Rippers. The best bowl skaters in the world have been invited to this iconic location to prove they deserve to have their name added to the bowl. The women's competition has been whittled down from 15 to the top six for the final. Six skaters in total, intro runs plus six minute jam, first wall rebate, scores will be based on overall impression. We're about to get into the contest right now, but first we check in with the top qualifier. Definitely helped that I skated it last year. I could kind of get in there and figure it out a bit quicker. But it's been super fun. The sessions have been really cool and all the girls here are awesome. So it's been super fun so far, yeah. 
a lady of few words a lot of the time, but she expresses everything within her skateboarding. She loves this bowl, and she definitely loves this type of format. Yeah, I love uh, the overall impression. It really uh, gives the skaters a chance to shine. You get to do your own individual run, and then you got to tough it out with five other skaters in the bowl. So, uh, yeah, Poppy getting into it. Nice spine transfer there into a 50-50 to fake. He gets away from her. It's got to be hard coming out of the blocks, first up skating in this type of format. Yeah, and overall impression really takes a bit of the pressure off of the run format because we got the jam still coming up and Indy R. Asp about to drop in. Skateboarding is just the best thing that happened to my life. It, look what I am right now. I'm in France skating with a lot of incredible people in this sick place with my picture in the bowl. It's just so sick. She is what has to be one of the most amp female skaters out there. She loves it. She's got so much positive energy. It's, uh, it's infectious. Indy's so cool. It's off to a great start. Lots of speed, power, and style. We come to expect that from Brazil. What makes her type of skating fit this bowl so much? Man, she's just got so much flow and uh, control. And yeah, just diversity in her skating. You know, you really have to like be creative and hit all kinds of walls. And there's lots of surprises in this bowl. And Indy's got a super deep bag of tricks and can just handle all the different transitions that come at her. How important also is it to have this first run just to show everyone who you are? Yeah, it's about confidence. I mean, if you have a great first run leading into a jam, you got that swagger. Yeah. That's the swagger yeah. you need. <laughs> I like that swagger. And she's proving to have a lot of swagger in that run, a full 40 second run in that one. That's unbelievable by the Brazilian. Dropping in next, 19 years old, Kisa Nakamura out of Japan. Heavy on mini ramp tricks a lot. Haven't seen her skate too much bowl, but you know, in the Vans Park series, she's been killing it also. Yeah, Kisa's uh, definitely got the skill level. We've seen her at Vans Combi in the deep section, so she can mix it up. And uh, we mentioned earlier, she really broke down the barrier for a lot of these Japanese women. And now there's just uh, a fearsome crew. They're so, so talented. And, and Kisa is uh, one of the benchmarks. Nice Smith stall there. Keeping her speed. Front side 50 50 Ooh. to Faggy through the corner. Loving that. Popping up Faggy Smith stall. Kisa famous for lip trick combinations, and we're seeing some of them here. This bowl right here is one of the biggest sections, and you can't really see it, but it, it, it's pretty big down there. Yeah, the. Uh, Bowl du Prado definitely has got transitions of all shapes and sizes. And there you see Kisa Nakamura trying to get it done. Just trying to step out of the way here for Bryce Wetstein, who is dropping in next in this final here at Marseille. Just coming up there. They're telling us still to go on. She's dropping in no matter what, still into it. There she is. One of the youngest competitors out there in the female division. Look at that, 50-50 to Fahey. A huge trick to start things off. Yeah, right into that disaster to Smith stall. Those are the kind of lip trick combinations that Bryce is famous for. I think over the last sort of year that I've been watching Bryce, she's gone from strength to strength in this uh, bowl park skating. Yeah, she's really uh, grown into her size and her style. And uh, yeah, a lot more to come from Bryce Wettstein. Autumn about to drop in as you see the overview of the park right there. Also, just to the left of her is that new, brand new rail that's never been here before. Dropping in on the extension. Yeah, Autumn, uh, another skater coming out of the Florida area. Did uh, well in some grind for life, local events. And then we've seen her traveling the globe this year with uh, the Vans Park Series crew. That was a nice eggplant into that front side air to start things off. Autumn is getting it done. Yeah, keeping a lot of speed around this bowl, over the spine. Front side 50-50 there. Oh, taking it all the way. Yeah, the front 50-50 to Fakie into the disaster. Great intro run so far from Autumn. I love that we see spines 
at uh, the Smarsay contest because you don't see spines at too many competitions anymore. So I'm, I'm happy to see it stay put here at Bull Rippers. The spine also seems to slow things down a little bit too. So you really need to know how much speed you're holding. In the 90s, we had spines everywhere. Now it's uh, kind of a dinosaur obstacle. <laughs> you need to get out there but and show, fun. The, show these kids what's up, Chris. Dinosaurs are fun. Dropping in next is Grace Mahofa. Also from Florida, Cocoa Beach area. Did well at some Grind for Life events as well. Shout out to our man, Mike Rogers, grindforlife.org. They do a lot for cancer patients and uh, skateboarding all over Florida. And Grace is now showing us what she can do on the global stage. Yeah, that, that first trick that she did on the extension, Air taking it to Decca. Nice so, tail slide there. Such a difficult trick. Only 16 years old, but she has been traveling the globe. Nice kickflip to Fakie there on the bank, mixing it up with some street skills. Yeah, the first flip that we've seen in the women's final. Don't go anywhere, six women, one ball. When we return, the final jam to crown the 2019 champion here at Bowl Rippers. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series from the Boulder Prado for Bowl Rippers in Marseille, France. Standing room only here as the women's final jam is underway. Six minutes on the clock, total of six skaters. And there we see Indiara Ath coming out of Florinopolis, Brazil, getting things started with this jam. Nice Indy Air transfer. What makes this jam format so difficult? Uh, well, you got to think about other skaters in the bowl. You know, you got uh, the bowl to yourself and you don't have to think about looking over your shoulder mid-air or mid-grind. And now you've really got uh, the element of fear in there because at any time, Kisa Nakamura could be creeping up on you. And look at that, three people in that spine section at once. Always been difficult, but there's, there's a few skateboarders who prevail in these types of circumstances. Autumn being one of them, Yindi Yara being another, and also Poppy Star Olsen. Yeah, you've really got to sort of mind read the other skaters and figure out what they're doing and what their next move is. And part of that is just watching them practice and knowing their lines. So that's a huge advantage to skating uh, in a jam section. You got to know where the other skaters are going. As you said before, you, you've really kind of got to have eyes in the back of your head and be able to do the tricks that you know while still looking over your shoulder because you never know who's going to come behind you. Yeah, you got to be three steps ahead of yourself in this jam section. And uh, there we see Bryce Wettstein doing a good job of doing just that. Up and over. Oh, Woo. going for a Smith right there, but I think it went into the left side. <laughs> and that is, that, this is the thing about this format. Up and over, you never know where anyone's gonna be. Yeah, it's wild. And I love the overall impression contest because you basically just have to rip. You have to just make a huge, huge impression on the judges. So uh, it takes a little pressure off landing one super technical trick. You gotta just go nuts, go bonkers, and go big. Yindiara nearly running into Autumn right there. That's what makes it so special, this contest. Poppy Star getting around this course. Nice Up front side over, air. Linking all of the sections together and just getting away with that as the, as the girls hug it out, grab their boards and get back up on the platform. Yeah, this uh, with the extensions and the spine sections and the hips, there is so much going on. So there's so much risk in this jam section with uh, six skaters in it at one time. Now, anyone who's skated this jam format knows that this period, these guys are nearly halfway through. You feel like you've gone through a marathon. Yeah, and I love how uh, Autumn Tust is sort of marathoning it. She's just uh, been in the bowl the entire time, not taking a breath. And there we see Australia's poppy star Olsen trying to catch up. Three minutes left. Now, obviously, there's a lot of strategy within this, or there can be if you're thinking about it. How important is it, Chris, for you to hold out until, oh, Yindi just takes one right there. Looks like it takes the breath out of her. Yeah, she was going for that layback air on the extension, and uh, wow, just looks like she got the, uh, the wind knocked out of her there. 
We've got some of the best medical staff on site here as her fellow skateboarder helps her out. Looks like it's, uh, yeah, just knocked the wind out of her there on that. Did you see the picturesque? Marseille. You love the uh, camaraderie you see in skateboarding. Unlike any other sport, these uh, men and women cheer each other on, they pick each other up, they uplift each other, they root for each other. So uh, you see Poppy jumping in to help out Indiara. Love that. Here she is pumping around that spine. Smaller section. But Getting a lot lots of speed. of speed there. Picking up for that layback air on the biggest extension. Ah, and it just, she got a little too over her toes there. As you mentioned, Corbin, the best medical staff. Hopefully Indy will be back up and completing this jam section. But man, what a difficult, hard slam that was. Just came unstuck there. It seemed like her body was too far over and not, not enough on her board. But uh, yeah, it's a tough one. As I was saying before, like how important is it, Chris, for these skaters to hold their bigger tricks to the end? Because it is that overall impression. Yeah, Corbin, you definitely want to build upon your momentum and your difficulty throughout the jam section. And there we see Indiara Asp getting up. She is tough as nails. Yes, she is. Strapping her helmet back on. We are about to get underway with the next half of the women's final here in Marseille. The crowd is behind her. There's Luiz Franci Francisco cheering her fellow Brazilian on. And Kisa Nakamura kicks things off. Followed by Grace Marhofer. They are tight carving through this ball. How hard is it for these girls to get back after a slam like that? Yeah, you know, uh, it's part of just being a professional skateboarder. You got to kind of just mentally reset. And, uh, you know, you watch someone else go down, you feel for them, but you got to be able to compartmentalize that and just drop in like Autumn Tust and go for it. Yeah, someone who's been strong the whole finals, she's definitely holding on and... Um, Super consistent. Yeah, moves through the course nicely, and I know the judges are looking for an entire use of this ball, and Autumn's doing a good job of just that. And there we see Indiara Ass back on course, and she oh! makes the layback air. Yeah, she's got it this time. The Marseille crowd goes insane. Power, speed, and style. I love it. Nice pop out to 50-50 stall there from Indy. Nearly taking Grace out on the way on, on the way out from that one. Tusk is in there again. Poppy's still in there. The energy is high for the women's final. Poppy's right on her heels. Backside alley oop over the spine. Wow, so much action going on at one time. Good job by our cameraman of capturing uh, six skaters ripping at one time. As you can see on the screen, Bryce is in, Grace is in. Everyone's trying to get those money moves at this time. Nice Look, invert there from Grace. Thousands of people packed around this bowl here right on the beach as the sun is setting. Wow, nice combination over the spine there from Kisa Nakamura doing it for Japan. Oh, that Woo! was so close. close. <laughs> Yindiara nearly colliding with Kisa. Yeah, you really got to have uh, eyes in the back of your head, as you said there, Corbin. 30 seconds on the clock. 50-50 to Fakie. Fakie Rock, what are we going to see in this last 23 seconds? Going for the backside. Disaster transfer doesn't make it. You hear the crowd chanting for Indiara. 10 seconds on the clock, what you got? Could this be the trick that seals the contest? Oh, just jumping off the front side boneless there, unfortunately. That is the women's final jam complete, but don't go anywhere. The men's competition gets underway when we return. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series.
Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. As the sun sets over the Mediterranean port city of Marseille, it is time for the men's final here at Bol de Prado in the south of France. Let's take a look at the Bowl Rippers competition format. Yes, we've got six skaters total. You get an intro run plus the seven minute jam. First wall rebate and scores are based on overall impression. Makes things exciting. It would mean the world to me. I mean, I love Marseille, and this is such like an iconic, legendary event. So it would be really rad to have my name on the top spot, you know? It would be cool. I'm just stoked to be out here, truthfully. Red Bull's throwing a great event, and uh, weather's good. Life's good, you know? Look at the focus on Chris Russell. Get out of this dude's way. <laughs> yeah, taking advantage of that first wall rebate there trying that alley-oop uh, eggplant. He'll get another shot at that. It really makes these skaters go for it to start things off, don't, don't they? Yeah, for sure. This is definitely overall impression. Brings out the best in these skaters. Boom, and there it is, alley-oop egg. Normally, a lot of skaters wouldn't go for the same trick again. He just went straight <laughs> back for it. Oh, that backside alley hung up on it and still made it. Chris is just so fearless and so fun to watch. You never know what to expect. And yeah, Chris is definitely uh, someone who excels in the jam format because no one wants to run in to Chris Russell. He also oh. just got that tattoo done on his stomach last night, so he must be feeling like that is sore as well as he goes down. Yeah, we saw a uh, slob fast plant disaster, and then he was going for a nose grind shuffle there. The skate park is like three balls, and you need to skate everything. So you need to push it so hard, and your legs feel so bad sometimes, but you need to still going. I don't know, it's one of the hardest contests. Chris, he's got that sort of European soccer player like energy about him. It's unbelievable how much he puts into it. This guy is a pit bull, man. I've been watching him travel the globe this year. He is just raw power, speed, aggression, consistency. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> He's got it all. Goes for it. Goes for it. Doesn't do super, super diff difficult tricks, but he makes up for it by just. Uh, just fear, force of will. <laughs> that was quite strange, him just jumping off that front side there. Got a little buckled uh, on the transition on the way down. Yeah, an uncharacteristic fall on a front side air there for Jaime, but uh, plenty of time to make it up in the jam section. Danny Leon out of Madrid. Skates with the local favorite here who's coming up very soon. You can tell he knows and understands this place with that transfer over the spine. It was effortless. Yeah, and look at that huge tweak stalefish. Danny has such great style. I like how Danny, uh, the tricks he chooses to do, it seems like he tries to do them better than anyone, and uh, we're seeing just that. Wow! Finger flip disaster. Love that trick. Into a front blunt. Yeah, Danny, this is a great intro run in the men's finals. Backside tail slide, getting all toey. <laughs> Hung on to it. We'll take it. Those waterfalls that he's pumping over right there, how difficult are they to skate? They are so severe. Oh, dude, you can see people buck up and slam on the waterfalls more often than you will the actual walls. What a run by Danny Leon. That is a run. He came out swinging on that. Setting the sanded. Send in the message. Yeah, it really sets the tone for your jam when you have a perfect, great run like that. Great job from Danny. Alessandro dropping in. The younger competitor in the field in the finals, but <laughs> you don't notice it right there with a huge lip, lip slide to start things off. Yeah, Alessandro has made a huge name for himself what? this year. Ali who fronts it air over the hip, that was massive. He won the uh, Europa Continentals, really put his name on the map, and everyone's uh, on notice with Alessandro right now. Great skateboarder. Nice fronts it air in the deep section. Ali backs that air into a 540. Oh. Wow. That was a great combination there from Alessandro using every single section of the bowl as well. That overall impression is gonna go down really well with the judges. 
Yeah, I mean, a fall at the very end there. Overall impression, he's got seven more minutes to shred. Now is the hometown favorite. He's from Marseille, the Frenchman, Vincent Matheron. Uh, I feel like super stoked because I can show like where I start skateboarding, where I grew up. And I'm super happy uh, to show them uh, my spot. One of the nicest guys in skateboarding. I've traveled with him a lot over the years. He knows how to skate this place. Yeah, and you hear the crowd erupt. This is uh, the hometown hero, and for good reason. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> what was he trying to... Yeah, it looked like a feeble grind, a smith grind, lip side transfer. I'm sure Vincent's done that 100 times here, if not 100,000. Yeah, don't Marseille worry about local. it. We will see it in the jam format, which is coming up very soon. Wow. Wow. You can, you can feel the intensity. <laughs> you can feel the intensity go through the roof just because the hometown hero. Here is another crowd favorite for sure, Luis Francisco. 360 flipped a fake. He oh, just holding on to that. on. Yeah, showcasing some street skills there. Yeah, Luis. Oh, the switch lip slide gets away from him, but he'll have seven more minutes to show us what he's all about. The men's final jam when we return. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series for the men's final jam here in Marseille, France. The fans are getting quite a show under the lights as the competitors make one last punch to become the 2019 Bowl Rippers champion. And Jaime Mateo is not wasting any time. He is in. And we see Vincent Matheron flowing through his hometown park, 21 years old, making France proud. Yeah, there's no one that skates this place quite like him. And if you thought you saw a lot of under and over and a lot of near hits in the women's, wait until you see the men's. Yeah, this is a high flying action. There we see Luis Francisco going huge making the Brazilian crew crap proud. Oh, nice. <laughs> Backside one foot to fakey. People like Vincent, people like Luiz, just throw in tricks where they don't even realize what they're doing. Backside air. Oh, into the heel flip Indy. Great combinations there from Luis Francisco. There you see him Ali 180ing into a bowl. That is not easy, Corbin. So hard to follow this, but it's Denny Leon. Look at him. What? Right Frontside flip, stale fish. Back nose blunt all the way around the spine. And there we see Jaime Mateo. Frontside invert one foot on the big extension going over the spine. Great use of the entire course. Big alley-oop air over the hip. Linking all of these bowls together. Jaime. Yeah, he definitely knows how to get around Marseille with a 50-50. Nice invert there. Yeah, and you know, Jaime is one of those guys you do not want to run into <laughs> in a jam section. <laughs> He is completely, what? completely fearless. There we see Anali 180 in the, <laughs> the deep bowl. How so did he do crazy. That? How did he do that so easily? Flying blind in more ways than one. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, Luiz, a lot of speed carrying around. Dropping in here it is, Chris Russell. And, and man, Chris looked like he was about to drop in at any moment on that bank section up there. There you see that front feeble into a one foot eggplant. Yeah, Chris. Unbelievable. He was just so amped at the top of the bank wall, the entire jam. So he's uh, like a pit bull out of the cage, just ready to go. Do you think it's possible for these guys to be over amped? Because you know what it's like being in this environment with this many people around. Yeah, and you gotta pace yourself. I mean, seven minutes is a long time. You see guys get too winded and uh, give everything they got in the beginning. You gotta pace yourself well throughout the entire seven minute jam. Yeah, cause you really wanna bring it home for the judges for that overall impression in that last minute. Someone that does not look winded one bit is Danny Leone. <laughs> he is <laughs> shredding right now. Oh, ah, Chris trying. Russell going for that alley 50-50 disaster Smith. What's Jaime up to? What? 
Hell? 180 boneless <laughs> off the extension. I'm I'm calling that a make because he fell on the next wall. I haven't that seen him insane. do that all weekend, but he does it now. Now the local hero. Oh, that's sugar cane. You see how he's just got every section of this park dialed. That feeble grind into the manual. That was so steezy and sick. He's doing tricks that no one has ever done before. And the judges must be looking at that and saying creativity. It's got to be a 10 out of 10. 100 percent there you see luis with the praying hands what's he got three minutes on the clock chris russell nearly over pumping on that one huge the muscle oh frontside air 180 on the big wall luis underneath him this is where it gets exciting two minutes and 40 seconds on the clock yeah, and if you're 19-year-old Luis Francisco, how scared of you are running into Chris Russell? <laughs> terrified. Absolutely terrified. <laughs> Jaime, Indy, air to fakie. Very nice. Combination, wow. Backside boneless, 180 on the hip section. That is going to score big with our judges. Well done for Jaime Mateo. Yeah, ending off with that backside disaster, revert in the deep end, taking a little breather there as we head back to the spine. Luez is back in, he's up on the extension. What's he got? He's been going non-stop. Ollie up the oh! massive extension to boneless in. Yes, he making his mentor Pedro Barros proud. That was sick. He knows what the crowd wants, the muscle. Everyone's trying to get on that extension to hype the crowd up. Yeah, speaking of knowing what the crowd wants, Chris Russell definitely free feeds well off crowd energy. And Jaime, you just can't get him out of the bowl. Trying to take it all the way around to Fakey. Smooth backside tail slide by Vincent. Ah, oh, the 540 attempt. He's got a minute 20. Now this is where it's all gonna go down. Chris Pastress, this is where the money moves come into play. For all the marbles. Ah, Luis going for an Indy 540 over the hip. He's got a minute to make that. Is he praying for the maker that he doesn't run into Chris Russell? I don't know, he's ripped his shirt off, so maybe he's trying to go toe to toe with him. <laughs> Let's see it, Luis. And Jaime back in. You cannot get this guy out of the ball. Landing a little too much on the flat there. Yeah, going for that Indy 360. He's got just under 40 seconds to make it. Let's see it. Danny Leon back in, just clocking the points up. Yeah, Danny does not even look like he's breaking a sweat. He's just a smooth operator. So many skaters in the bowl. It's all happening with under 20 seconds on the clock. Final moments here. What, what, what do we got? What? Chris Russell. Did his board just snap <laughs> that? Did you see that? Massive slob <laughs> fast plan to disaster. Ending with a bang. Five seconds. What else have we got? You can hear the crowd counting it down here in Marseille. <laughs> Everyone is going <laughs> wild. After the break, we will crown the 2019 Men's and Women's Bowl Rippers Champion. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. We're in the south of France for Bowl Rippers. We are about to add two names to the list of legendary skaters that have come to compete here at the iconic Bowl de Prado. An incredible show of progression tonight by both men and the women. And speaking of progression, there we see Jaime Mateo, that alley-oop in the air to revert, makes it after time for the love. That's what's so special. There it is in the background about this contest. The time is over, but everybody is still involved and still skating. It's about the energy. This is pure skateboarding. 100%, yes, and pure skateboarding. We await the women's results. There we see Indiara Asp. Let's check out the top six there. In sixth place, we have Autumn Tusk. Fifth, Bryce Wetstein. 
Fourth, Grace Mahofa. Third, Kisa Nakamura in second. Last year's winner, Yindi. And the number one position, Chris Pastris, is Poppy Star Olsen for the first time ever. Yeah, stoked for Poppy. She had a great consistency, great run, skated well throughout the jam, and really uh, used the entire course and clock to her advantage. There you see her mother, Thomas, congratulating her. Job well done. Let's head down to Tina Dixon. Thanks, Corbin. What an electric night. Uh, the reaction on your face when you found out you won was absolutely priceless. What was going through your mind? Uh, I don't know. I just, uh, the whole competition, I'm still like, can't even talk. I just had so much fun and I was skating with all my best friends and I just had the best time ever. So I'm definitely going to remember this for the rest of my life. <laughs> There's something very special about this event and you have now added your name to this bowl. There's so much history and legend with this bowl. Uh, what does that mean? It's so awesome. I'm so stoked to just be a part of such an amazing competition. The crowd, everything about this competition, it's definitely my favorite. And, you know, now to take the win is the craziest thing. Oh, my goodness. Huge congratulations, Poppy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Corbin. Thanks, Tina. What a feeling it must be to take out Marseille for the first time. Yeah, you know, Poppy Star Olsen has traveled the globe to all the events. So to hear her say this is her favorite event and to win it, that's huge. Let's get into the men's results. In sixth position, we have Vincent Matheron. Fifth, Alessandro Mazzara. Fourth, Luis Francisco. Top three, Danny Leon. And then it was tight between Chris Russell and our winner with Tina Dixon right now, Jaime Matau. It was chaos during the event. It is still chaos. You kept skateboarding. Uh, what does this mean to win this event? Well, I don't have words to say how I'm feeling now. That's amazing. <laughs> yes, that does say it all. He has no words to say. I think this contest, the progression has just gone through the roof. Yes, the progression, the raw power, the fearlessness, and the entire use of the course and the clock. Couldn't agree more. That's it from Marseille. Let's send it back to Sal. Thanks to all of you for joining us at the 2019 Red Bull Bowl Rippers at Bowl de Prado on the Mediterranean. Congratulations to the Spaniard, Jaime Mathieu. With the sun going down, the crowd's energy rising, Jaime thriving under the lights and delivering a score of 85.3 that included not one but two alley-oop 540s across the judges' box. After winning the title in 2017, he returns to the podium and is the king of Marseille in 2019. Therefore, Jaime Mathieu gets our signature moment. Also, congrats to the USA's Chris Russell and the other Spaniard, Danny Leone, for rounding out the podium. Congratulations to Poppy Star Olsen from Australia, capturing the women's title and beating out the 2018 champion from Brazil, Indiara Asp, who finished second, and Japan's Kisa Nakamura in third. A truly international field going down here in France, as should be expected as skateboarding makes its debut on the world stage in Tokyo in 2020. Once again, thank you for hanging out with us. Be sure to follow us in any manner that you get social. And on behalf of our entire All-Star crew, Corbin Harris, Chris Pastris, Tina Dixon, and yours truly, we will see you next time. <laughs>